So at this point, I have configured my orchestrator appliance by connecting the security gateway modules to downlink ports on the orchestrator. I also connected a serial console cable as well as an ethernet console cable, then used the serial console to configure the ethernet management console uh, serial console, by the way, uses 9600 baud, 8 bits, no parity by default. So here I have connected to the web user interface of the orchestrator appliance, and I'll log in. Default credentials are admin and admin, though so it'll want you to change that the first time you log in. Note that the web user interface for the orchestrator looks like uh, pretty much any other Gaia web user interface, except for the addition of this orchestrator menu entry. So when I click on that, you can see that the orchestrator has connected to it six security gateway modules. And the security gateway modules must be using a line card, an ethernet card, that supports the link layer discovery protocol, LLDP. This link layer discovery protocol is used to inform the orchestrator of what's plugged in to that downlink port. And it includes, as you can see, information about the model of the security gateway module uh, and, and serial number. That um, network card, as I said, must support link layer discovery protocol. It must also support double VLAN to be compatible with the orchestrator. So I have six unassigned security gateway modules, and I have many, many unassigned interfaces available. I want to create a security group. A secure, security group is a logical group of computing, and that would be the security gateway module appliances, and network, that would be the interfaces, uh, logical group of compute and networking resources. And as I briefly discussed, a security group is represented by a single management object that presents the illusion that there's just one appliance and that illusion is presented by the single management object host, which by default is the first security gateway module added to the security group. And the security group needs an IP address, which will be used to communicate with that single management object for policy installs, as well as web user interface and secure shell command line interaction. So I'm going to configure IP address of this security group. And I'm not going to configure a default gateway because this will not be the external network. I have the option of setting up the first time wizard. And it's convenient to do it here when I'm creating the security group, though I can come back and set the activation key and set the host name at that time. And here I can choose to create a VSX security group. And when I go create the object in Smart Console to represent this security group and policy, I need to know if it was created as a regular security group or as a VSX security group to know what kind of checkpoint object to select to represent the security group. So I've created the security group. Note that uh, there are still no gateways or interfaces assigned to it. I have to assign them by dragging and dropping. So. I would note that the web user interface on the orchestrator is touchy about where you drag and drop to. I can't drag and drop there. It's not accepted. I have to drag and drop to the correct gateways for 
gateway objects and interfaces for interfaces. So at this point, if I try to apply, I'll be told uh, you got to have at least one management interface. And again, that management interface, it's it's distinct from the management interface for the orchestrator appliance itself. That is on the other end of the orchestrator appliance. Here, what we mean by management interface is one of the ports that have been configured as management interfaces uh, instead of uplink or downlink interfaces. And these ports are used for communicating with the single management object. So I'm going to assign interfaces. There's a management interface. I'm also going to assign some interfaces for the security group so that we can have an internal network and an external network as well as the management network. At this point, I should be able to apply because in the security group, I've configured IP address information. I've added gateways to the security group and I've added at least one, you generally only have one, management port and also some, some other ports for the site traffic. And when I click apply, we'll take a look at that and decide if I've fulfilled all the requirements. And if I have, then it will choose the first security gateway in the list of gateways as the single management object. And it will send the configuration of this security group to that single management object and it will be received uh, ultimately by all of the security gateway modules in this security group. These security gateway modules will then restart because their configuration has changed. Uh, they now know about different network interfaces and so on. So there's a brief period of time that you have to wait after applying changes to the security group for uh, the, the, the security group to be ready, at least when you initially configure the security group. While I'm waiting for the single management object to become responsive after having uh, uh, created this security group, I just wanted to note that the security gateway modules, the checkpoint firewall appliances, are running a special version of the Gaia operating system. It's called the scalable platform version uh, denoted by an SP. So you'll note that these appliances are actually running uh, version R80.20 SP. Now, in a future release, perhaps the scalable platform features, which handle the synchronization of configuration changes and so on, will be just merged into the regular R80. What have you uh, product. But at least as of R80.30, uh, there's still two distinct flavors, versions of the operating system. And you need to make sure that you have scalable platform version uh, for use with the orchestrator. So at this point, the security group has been created and the single management object is answering the security group's IP address which is in this demonstration, 172.25.161.155. And so I'm able to connect to the web user interface of the security group. I'm talking to the single management object. I'll go ahead and sign in to the web user interface. And one thing that I want to do while I'm in the web user interface of the single management object is configure the network interfaces. And that way, their configuration can be imported uh, into the, the smart console security gateway object uh, when it fetches topology.
So in, in this demonstration environment, no, the, the link status is no link. We'll ignore that because this is not a, a production deployed a maestro environment. So I've created the uh, security group. I logged into the web user interface of the single management object and configured the interfaces that will be used to accept traffic from the internal network, apply security policy, and then forward the traffic out to the external network off to the internet. At this point, I'm going to change the uh, password for the admin user. Uh, it's currently the default of uh, admin and admin. And I'll set it to a different password. So uh, I, I did that so that later on uh, in the command line interpreter, uh, I won't have to change it then. Now that I have the single management object configured with the interfaces uh, assigned IP addresses, uh, next I'm going to go to a smart console, smart console application and create the object and establish SICK and uh, use it in security policy. I'm now ready to create a checkpoint object to represent the security group that I created. And I'm using the, the wizard. You, you don't have to, you can use the, the classical method. So I'm going to name the gateway what I named the security group. Maestro SG, and I'll select that it's the Maestro platform. And the IP address I assigned to the security group. Now, those of you that have been paying attention, the eagle-eyed among you may notice that IP address and ports are a little bit different. It's because of this demonstration environment. Um, it was necessary for the demonstration. But what we get is a checkpoint gateway object that represents the security group via that single management object, which answers at 172.31.1 in this environment. And the orchestrator is hiding the fact that there are multiple security gateway modules that are assigned to the security group and will be handling traffic. From the point of view of the management server and smart dash or smart console, it appears to be just one security gateway. And again, if I would have created the security group as a VSX security group, I would want to have created a VSX gateway object instead of a checkpoint security gateway object. And now I'm just going to install a very simple policy for demonstration purposes. I just use the cleanup rule and set the action to accept. So I explained before that after the security group was created and the single management object host came up and was responsive, I connected to that via the web user interface and I set up the interfaces that I had assigned to the security group. And I, I did that so that when I establish SICK with the new security gateway object and it pulls over the topology of that gateway, it had the interfaces predefined. 
So policy installation is proceeding. And once policy installation has successfully completed, then this security group will be available for use. And in the security gateway object that I created, for simplicity's sake, during this demonstration, I only had the firewall blade enabled. And now that I have installed my uh, access control policy, and if I want, I can go back in and set up what other blades uh, that, that I might want, including HTTPS inspection. So next, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some command line commands that are useful in a in a Maestro deployment, both on the orchestrator and on the single management objects.